as tired as everybody was that was playing and as so many great games. You saw it all, you felt it all, you heard it all. We have a brand new King of Cornhole. Branson, Missouri is the home of the Cornhole Universe today for the second day in a row of the American Cornhole Organization. Branson, Missouri major, the final major of our season 17. I am Finn, the loudmouth for the ACO, standing next to ACO Pro, Philip Barnett, the Mississippi Ninja. You and I, uh, you, you in, your, in your pro jersey, but yeah. me in my lifer jersey. I went a little different on the wardrobe tonight because I had an opportunity to be a part of the competition today and uh, we have had a lot of fun this entire weekend Absolutely. we've had some great competition tonight plans to be exactly the same they do last night we had some great action in the co-ed division and tonight we're going to bring you some doubles action absolutely we, we've finished up the singles we're into the doubles bracket and we're going to get some great games right here on center court yes we are we just crowned our singles champion for the weekend more on that Coming up here in just a moment, but great doubles action, as Philip was mentioning here, on center court here on just the right side of the tracks of the Branson, Missouri Railway and the Branson Landing. So we're looking forward to bringing it to you. We've got all the action, so sit back, kick up your feet. When you grab your seat, get yourself a cold one just like we have. You'll have the best seats in the house. We'll have the second best seats in the house. We promise you that. And we will bring you all the action and an opportunity to get to know the winners just a little bit better as we go. And we're going to start the evening with a very cool thing that has been instituted this season. And this is the opportunity for non-ACO pros to score a little extra cash working their way through the singles bracket in a non-pro but a player jersey. So these two are going to be playing against one another, Chip Garrett and Dan DeClue out of Georgia and Missouri, respectively. They're going to be fighting for a little cash bonus in those player jerseys. Philip. Yeah, absolutely. And just for wearing that, that, that jersey, the, even though they're not ACO pros, yep. they're going to throw for a championship because they were the highest finishing Non-pros. Non-pros in the singles division, and they're going to grab some cash Well, out one of, of the reasons that uh, that was instituted this year by Frank Gears and company was the fact that we do have an ACO Pro bonus if you work your way through the entire single at any major all season long, and you've got that ACO Pro jersey on, you are eligible, and you will score an extra $1,000 on top of any and all purse money. So this should be a lot of fun. We, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about our singles champion here who just – Really, really put on a clinic here Man, over the course of the entire he, weekend. He really did. <laughs> I mean, he went through some great competition like a hot knife through butter, yes. I'm going to tell you. We had uh, quite a, a few uh, dog fights and slug slugfest matches. We had a couple that were a little bit more of a buzzsaw, but I'll tell you, as we get into the discussion of the singles bracket, some great talent stacked up throughout the weekend here in Branson, and we look forward to more doubles action as the players – get their final instructions they're going to run off and uh take care of a little bit of business as frank years our founder and our chief referee and uh hype man starter the cornhole <laughs> the dude our official starter <laughs> he will give them the opportunity to check in let him know they're ready and then bring it when they have that opportunity here in just a moment but let's talk a little bit about gary bearpaw who is our man. singles champ he came through and he just unloaded and craig irvin who he took down in the final match uh I'll, I'll tell you something that was a thing to behold because craig worked his way through chase puckett and what was a slug fest and these are names that if you know cornhole yeah. you know these names then craig faced off against zachary rush who was part of our co-ed championship team last night took care of him then he faced off against Gary Bearpaw. And correct me if wait, I'm wait wrong, but that don't final. Forget his, don't forget his doubles partner, Russell Tabers. Well, Russell Tabers. Yeah. He did beat Russell Tabers as well. But mm -hmm. uh, as we worked his way down, I, I was looking more down the Craig Irvin genealogy uh, chart there. So he was able to uh, take down all of those. Yeah. And I believe that final match, 21 to 2. Was Man, that the final? Yeah. Like, like you said, it was a clinic. I've been bring told it, baby. Bring Here it. we go. So uh, Chip Garrett, he is running. Out of the blue lane, he is the higher seed. He will take on Dan DeClue, Missouri's own here, as we emanate from the center court here at the Branson Convention Center. Again, I am Finn the Loudmouth for the ACO. Been announcing for the for the team here for years and years. Philip Barnett, a pro in the ACO, yeah. and uh, we're getting ready to crown a whole new batch of pros this year as we work our way back to the world championships right here back in Branson the final week of July. 
Absolutely. And Chip, he, he's been playing really well. He actually showed up at one of our regionals the other day. This in uh, Mississippi and played some. And Dan gets four points to start the, the match off. Yeah, a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of a pull there on the first couple of shots there from Chip. But four spot, not all that difficult to overcome. Now, if it turns into an eight spot, then a 12 spot, and then a 16 <laughs> spot, and then a 20 to nothing spot, still can be overcome. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen it. We've seen it happen. <laughs> For sure. We saw quite a few matches today that, uh, in fact, I believe the aforementioned Russell Tabers was involved with one with Doug Parker. Oh, he yeah. was up, I believe, 18 to nothing and had yeah. to really gut it out there at the very end. Yeah, that was one of the great matches we've been sitting here watching. Me and we, Finn, we, me, you and I have been sitting here watching matches for a while, you know, and we I, have already seen some good ones. We talked about the fact that we should have uh, called the guys at stadium and said, hey, what if we come on at noon because yeah, we really. have really good play going on here, the little wash there to get them on to the next frame. But, uh, yeah, we've seen some great action here from the, uh, the co-ed, uh, again, uh, doubles. We've had some teams that are running right now through the doubles, and we'll have some great doubles action coming up here in just a little while. But, uh Boy, the, the, the men, the women, some of the younger players. I was out just playing around here on center court, just pitching some bags. And uh, if you if you were with us last night, you certainly know the name Fretwell. Oh, yeah. Uh, Amber and Shane Fretwell, their youngest, was out here, Brody, uh, at the ripe old age of, I believe, five or six years old. And he and his 10-year-old partner took me and my doubles partner down 21-20 out on center oh, yeah. court. So I that was, was. I wish I could have been calling that match. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad all the equipment oh. was turned off at the time. <laughs> yeah, and right on cue, Amber Fredwell gave me a wave right yeah. when he started talking about her. That's outstanding. Is she listening? <laughs> well, we like to think that the uh, the hometown folks are listening, but uh, you, you made mention of the, the competition from yesterday and uh, from a score standpoint, Four to uh, we're looking uh he just picked up yeah, I think, a did. five spot so five we're looking at five on four yeah so uh dan de clue able to uh run right out of the and chip is he started throwing that blocker first back as dan re-blocks chip throws his arm up like he's cocking a gun or or something it's kind of unusual but we see him we see them all Unusual throw here. Yes, we do. Everywhere. 400 players, 400 different ways That's to, throw, right. to oh. throw a bag. Now, I think I'm looking at our score. We're looking red. Oh, I think yeah. we need to change it on the. Uh, yeah, we'll have a little technical difficulty over there. We'll get it. Five to four. Chip Garrett. Chip Garrett over Dan. Yeah. The Dan blue, blue over red. And Dan just picked up a five spot to go to nine to five. Yes, he did. And by the time we get their names flip-flopped around, the game, the game could be over. Maybe over <laughs> and somebody will grab that non-pro <laughs> bonus. But, uh, man, I watched a heck of a game out in the doubles pool while we were waiting to come on air between Glover and Anderson and the Longs. And it came down to 21 to 20 match, and it was awesome. So I can't wait to see what we're going to get here on center court. All right, so last night it was uh, Seth Four out of Tui, Oklahoma, defeated Sebastian Barger, who we expected to be perhaps our juniors champion last night. Yeah. But uh, he came in second place to Seth, who threw a great game. Robert Harper, the rainmaker, was able to take down Scott Mitchell also out of Paragold, Arkansas. So uh, a couple of the uh, 870 guys taken down and uh, a peg second place, but well played by both Seth and Robert. Congratulations on juniors and seniors, respectively. Amber Fretwell who we were just discussing, ticked down Martina Belt. And uh, I'll tell you what, there was a little bit of a revenge then a little later on in the co-ed doubles when Martina yeah. – pa she partnered up with Zach Rush, and they came in as the 29 seed and took down Amber and Shade, the number one seed. Yeah, just remember that name, Zach Rush. co-ed doubles, yeah, he is we – uh, We've been seeing him on the center court, and he's been throwing some fire. He has. He's had a yeah. uh, really good weekend, and uh, – for not playing all of that all that long, he really does have a groove built, and he's got—I oh, yeah. mean, he's got all the gear, he's got all the bags, he's got the temperament, he does. and uh, he's got the skills, if you wills. Yeah, those are built in. Yeah, 
Yeah. All right. So we'll continue to watch these guys still kind of get a bit of a feel for each other mm -hmm. out here on center court. Again, we're playing for the non-pro bonus, which is an opportunity for non-ACO pros if they're wearing their player jersey to work their way through the singles bracket and the opportunity to play off to win a little extra bonus cash for having worn those jerseys as well. So they're going to uh, continue to adjust the yeah, they have score trouble here. With the score tower there. Tally up. Now they're going to have a. I think he just got four. Have a conference. So yeah. now I guess. <laughs> this is, I'm confused at the score too, by uh, the way, because they're having trouble. There it is. Thirteen to five. Now we got it straight. So Dan should be up 13-5. They have switched colors to match the lanes that they are in, and they have adjusted the colors there we go. and the score accordingly. So we knew the guy we worked with would get that figured out. Everything sure makes sense. He is the best. Everything makes sense now. Yep. So McClure right down in the middle. It's good to have a little exhibition match like this, yeah. which is a you know great competition. Speaking of which, a little bit later on, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we will have what has become one of the uh, I think one of the great tent pole events of our weekend majors is that the Hampton Farms Big Blindfold Challenge, which is exactly what you think it is based on what it sounds like, <laughs> and an opportunity uh, today to watch a couple of our more seasoned players give it a shot with the blindfold on, and found out it's not anywhere near Absolutely. as easy as they thought it might be. Nice bag there right there. Let's, let's see if Chip can push through that and grab a couple points right here. I know he, he won our regional over there Wednesday night. So he's got the tools. Oh, and he is Boy, unthinkable. He, yeah. I think he uh, would love to have the Metal Arc lo <laughs> Lemon rubber band on that one to pull, <laughs> pull that, back that back and back. try it again because not only did he not score, he put one in there for – yeah. Dan, and I've so Dan doing, rolls up 17 on five. I've been doing that all day, Finn. Shots have, you want to take back? Actually, I helped my opponents out so much mm -hmm. today. I, they're probably going to send me a Christmas gift. Oh, no question, no question. I, I was the biggest advantage all of yeah. the people I played against had. Oh, and Dan, he, he's, he's, he's wanting the money a little more than Chip right now, I think. Well, I think there's just a difference in the level of uh, of, of steady follow through. You see, uh, yeah. Dan steps up and he just gets in that in that motion, and you watch him between shots. You're catching Chip. I think maybe second guessing a little yeah. bit of his uh, his approach to this particular game. He's stepping in tight to the board, and now you'll see Dan. That's well, not bad. That's not, not bad. Not terrible there, but he leaves a little bit of a peak of daylight in there for Chip to. Try to get through the center. Now, can he do that without bringing Dan with him? That's the question. He doesn't. He does. He looks back at the scoreboard as if to say, maybe I'm just yeah. going to uh, play this safe. And, and he did. He did. Yeah. I thought he could slick side right through the middle of them. I don't know. He Let might have. He might have uh, mistakenly then taken both bags. If all three of those bags had gone in, done himself a disservice uh, yet again. So that was probably the smart play, play to live to fight yeah. another frame. As Dan's got a command, it's 17 to 5 lead. First bag is out of play. See if Chip can get going here. There it is. That's interesting. I know Chip is JC. Yeah, I can't, I've been trying to figure that out. Too. Yeah, I don't, I don't exactly know <laughs> why, but I know that I do. So, uh, Dan a little bit off to the left there, giving Chip uh -huh. the opportunity to take that middle. Still plenty of real estate available there. Nice on the hole, bag. which he takes. He, I, I, I don't think he intended to take Dan's bag with him, but, you know, what a neighborly thing to do. Yeah, and he's a chance uh, to pick up four. Got the middle all to himself right now. There all right, is. very nicely done. Taters exchange as they work their way down west to east on your monitor there, and uh, he's going to post a little extra, if you will, to his uh, yeah. score tally. So 17 on nine now, Dan. The clue out of the red lane, the lower seed, and Chip Garrett out of the higher seed working his way back. And we've seen quite a few comebacks, quite a few uh, opportunities to double dip. We've had all kinds of great scenarios all over the weekend, and it's been a lot of fun to be here from junior, seniors, women's, co-ed, 
the big blind draw, the uh, quad tournament last night, which uh, was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. tier play, of course, throughout today, tier three. If you get uh, bounced out of the main bracket, you have the opportunity to take points home in tier three and tier two. And uh, we got to play a little bit of that. I got to play a little oh, bit yeah. of that. Not for very long, mind you, but uh, enough to uh, keep me busy throughout the afternoon. you got to start somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the bottom is typically the place. So <laughs> I apologize to my partner before we even registered for the tournament. But uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And I think that's the thing that I notice. You, you continue to notice as you work your way around ACO events. It's just the family atmosphere. We talk about the ACO family cannot be under uh, or overstated to be honest with you because it is it is just a lot of fun you see people uh, families of all ages as well moms dads kids brothers sisters and uh, like i said today we had five and six year olds showing us how it was done out there so the the superstars of the future already working their way up 27 feet toe to toe yeah. on the main boards and we will see them too. on center court yeah brody i'm telling you right brody fretwell is a name you might want to go ahead and write down now he's got good genes though for sure no mama, question. Mama and Daddy can pitch some bags. Yes, they can. Sure. We saw that last night. Both of them have that airmail if they need it. And when it was the two of them squared up against Ashley and Craig Irvin, it was a battle of uh, four airmail specialists. Oh, well, this is our. That's a nice bag right there. Yeah, it was. This is our tenth major, man. And I'll tell you what, I know we've had a good time, man. And tenth together on stadium, absolutely. yeah. Thirty-five, uh, I yeah. believe, nationwide throughout the course of season mm -hmm. seventeen, but. Uh, we picked 10 that we thought you would get a kick out of watching on stadium. Oh, oh fantastic bag. bag. Nicely done. And, uh, yeah, it has been a lot of fun. We're working our way towards some big one-off tournaments here and then the uh, World Championships as well the last week of July. We can get into some of those tournaments that uh, we think would be a lot of fun. If you live in the area or you'd like to bring your game out to some of these events, you are certainly welcome to do that, and we all have more information on that for you here in just a little oh, while. Yeah. You can also check out AmericanCornhole.com anytime. And every time, and the, uh, cont the score continues to tighten just a Absolutely. little bit. Dan is uh, probably feeling a little bit of the heat coming out of the blue lane now with that red lane still holding the lead, the lower seat 17 on 13, and a nice first bag there from from Chip. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, let's go back to the to the one I told you he might could slick side through there. He laid up for the wash, and ever since then, he has been on a steady diet of putting the bag in a hole. He has uh, that last yeah. bag, probably not where he wanted it, no. but he he did regain. He didn't. He he was. Oh, well, oh now oh. he's going to start talking and to himself again. This could be the game, and Dan set up to finish this off. Not quite where he wanted it. It's still gettable. And Chip must get this bag in the hole right here, or JC, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it. Oh, no boy, and he left it set up high. Yep. And yeah. all he got to do is bump one bag in, game is over, and he's going to pick up the extra cash for wearing that jersey. And there oh, it is. Oh, and there it is. He, yeah. he didn't even expect that one to be the one no. that made the difference. <laughs> but congratulations. Dan DeClue runs out of right here in Missouri. He takes down Chip Garrett out of Georgia, and he's going to grab that, uh, that little extra bonus. He's got his player jersey on, and uh, he's going to grab – a set of headphones here. We're going to have him do that and then step out on camera. We'll talk a little bit uh, to these guys and we'll have them uh, talk to us a little bit about a little bit about what it was like yeah. to be on center court, man. And and Dan, that was uh, nicely done. And uh, you, you stayed steady. You didn't seem to get unnerved there when he, even when he started to tighten it up just a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, well, talk a little bit about how it was to keep yourself safe. Um, you know, I guess I wasn't going to say safe, but but sane. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just had to focus on throwing the bag to the hole because I, I, a lot of times I just throw it a little too soft and it kicks left on me. So I just had to concentrate on throwing it a little deeper, a little higher. All right. So uh, talk a little bit about where you play at home. Uh, you know, when, when you're out playing regionals and, and things like that, when, when you come into a major like this, who comes with you and who are you, who are you most uh, looking forward to competing against? Well, I'm from the St. Louis area. I, I play for uh, Dardeen Prairie Cornhole. Uh, uh, my partner is Jason Wolf. Right. Uh, we go to all the majors together. This is our third major. Um, we don't care who we play. We just we just want to play. <laughs> we, just, we just want the experience. Obviously, yeah. uh, you know you got to play the the big dogs, and that gives you the experience and it makes you get better. Absolutely. Uh, hey, what were you thinking when? Uh Chip was making that little comeback right there. You had you jumped off to a big lead, and 
All of a sudden, he was chipping away. Did the nerves get to you any at all? Or oh, you... no. No, no, it's, it's not nerves. It's uh, me. I, I play the game within myself. I have to make sure I'm throwing. Like I said, I got to throw the thing deep on the board. If I don't, I have a little sissy soft toss. And, you know, I have a real soft toss. <laughs> and when I don't get it up there, it's going to just drift left. Oh, that sounds very familiar. I've been working on that all day because I just can't get enough <laughs> oomph behind yeah. it sometimes. And, uh and it, it takes a little bit of extra energy and maybe a little bit more of an arm swing or something. But I'm, I'm kind of the same with you. When it lands, it lands. It doesn't do a whole lot of dancing yeah, once Chip, it hits the floor. Chip did a good job. Uh, he, yeah. he didn't give up. He hung in there. and He, he got strong, and I just had to stay with him. Well, yeah. it was a, a fantastic match. The non-pro bonus goes to you for working your way up uh, through the singles division today here. And yeah. congratulations, man. Take that cash and uh, take your team out to a nice dinner or do whatever it is. But uh, congratulations, and we'll see you yeah. at the Worlds. ACO, we are Cornhole.